Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad and I am in a, an antiquing district in Spokane that I haven't shown you before. Spokane is big enough that yes, it has two different areas where antiquing and vintage are a thing. In the Hilliard district, that's my very dirty looking van right there. It is very full. I just picked up things thanks to the courtesy of a very kind viewer who picked up my bids. I just picked up a whole bunch of stuff that I won at one of the auction houses here in Spokane. So the van has gone from post-show slight emptiness to being completely full again. So between that and limited time, I'm just going to be able to do a little walkabout here and show you the highlights. Uh, but there's a lot of cool antiques and vintage and I've gotten some neat stuff here in Hilliard. Behind me is our first stop. Market Street Antiques. This is Market Street in Spokane. Hilliard was a railroad district and the construction you see through the alley there is where they're finally putting a big road bypass and taking out a lot of the tracks but they're also relaying the main line because it is still a fairly important rail center. This place has been here for a while and it's a cool place and they've got some neat stuff. The Native American items, they're selling well, but a lot of people in the 1970s and 80s were collecting, and some of the prices got ahead a little bit, but at 30% off, these are actually some pretty nice deals. The beaded bag to the back would be 175 I like these tall mocks here. I like the children's size. These look like 1950s from the colors, but it really has to do with the stitching more than anything identifying the beads and the patterns for particular tribes. And I can't say I'm expert in it. I have some experience with it. Those are a very cute pair of moccasins for around 175. This is a neat piece made out of olive wood. This is an old tourist item from Jerusalem. You can tell it's older by the Germanic script on it. And it's a nice little box. Hmm. I wonder how much this is. I don't find a lot of things that are earlier from that part of the world. First, let's see how much it is. 1895. Oh, I think I'm getting this. Yes, I think that's very nice for that price. Here's that thing about buying something that is different than what you're seeing around you. Okay, you push in with your nail and you have a little font. Some of these Alaskan souvenir masks from the 1950s and 60s are starting to be collectible. And this one says it is circa 1958. It actually says, Distributor since 1958, Lonnie Temple, Spinard, Alaska, Authentic Alaskan Animal Trim. I'd say this is a 1970s piece. All native 30% off, so that would make this $28. It might be worth $56, but it's shedding, and when fur is shedding, it is a good idea to pass because it will not get better. My first Lichtensteinian item, the cake stand. That's actually very cute, and it looks like it plays music. Oh, there's sales, so my timing is good. Pretty blue candles down there. They look like a painted version of Jasperware. The perpetual calendar, unfortunately, is damaged. That's early Alaskan souvenir, and that does well. Only $10 too. That would have been a great piece if it was in better shape. Great color on the Smith Corona for $69. Purple grapes are $30. You see a lot of this sort of thing in Spokane because of course there was a boom around the time of the Expo 74 World's Fair and actually there has been lately. The city is almost a quarter million people now. Aha! $24. Nowadays at this price I think I will buy this piece. And the green Ball Radio by Panasonic, the Panapet 70 for $29 in working order. I think that's a buy. Boy, I'm finding stuff right away. This really is a cute store. It's been here a while, and it just has a nice vibe. 
I like the old building. It has a certain feel. This is a fun display here with the panther in front of the brass. See, brass is a thing. I think Laura Caldwell might approve of some aspects of this display. She's got an eye too, and I think that there's a certain boho feel, although it's now void one orange glass compote I just bought. Boy, the jewelry casket for 16 needs a little bit of silk. That one doesn't have any at all. 35, that's not bad for these. I've seen them sell a lot more in live sales. A little damage there. This is fun life ring. 20 bucks. Where would I put this? I mean, I just have no room in the car. I don't know what I'm doing. Hard to leave it though. Could I sit on it for a five hour drive? I've not quite ever done anything that strange. Ooh, look at these roosters. Those are fun. Big old acrylic roosters. They're marked 45 for the pair. I'm getting them. Having some sales. This is Fiesta Wear, of course. And wow. Boy, I mean, another good price. That's 20 bucks. I just don't have room for such dimensional stuff. That one glows without even having a black light on it. Oh, I guess there is one up there, isn't there? Night Glow Frisbee from 1995. Feed me cigarettes. This is so funny. I just got one of these for five dollars. I've never seen one before. It's a German, probably 1920s or 30s advertising display ashtray for shoes with a monkey. And now here I see another one. That's what keeps you going though, the idea that you're going to learn and find new things all the time. These are Abingdon. Cute yellow pair. I notice people are starting to buy yellow. Six dollars. Again, this is, these prices are great. They really will have to come back. Mm, you know I like this stuff. Cute little Hygieia baby bottles with patty cake on there. Who are you? Yeah, oh, a shop cat, yes. Cute things in here, I just love all this little stuff. Look at the really sweet little hat in the back here, made of leather. I don't know if this is a purse, yes it is. I wonder how much that is, it's awfully cute. These are the size of things that I should be looking for. $10 for the counter seems pretty good, actually. People like these little devices. Child's moccasins, $12. I like those. They're probably 50s or 60s era, but they have a nice supple feel. Call Philip Morris. Sample cigarettes. I'll spread this stuff out for him a little bit. I know I always appreciate help when I'm a dealer because you can't get in all the time. Besides, that way everybody can see everything. Well, it's nice that they're having a sale because I see some cute stuff in here. This is Murano. Good price. I'm telling you, I may not get to the other stores at this point. I am going to have to pick up the pace here. But this one is one of the ones that I've always done the best in traditionally because they've got neat stuff and some of these are old line dealers and they're ready to let go. This tea card I have a feeling will be a great price that I can't take with me. $99. Well these days that actually is a pretty good price and I would like to have it and could use it but alas it will be staying here. I completely miss the neon here. The old Milwaukee is the oldest of the three. 149. This is something we see in this part of the country. Horseshoes made into various things. It's like the industrial stuff in the east being made into lamps and things. Well, horseshoes and tools get made into those things out west. Columbia Winery is a place a lot of people have been because they have a lot of entertainment there in the summertime and sell a lot of wine. $99 is probably pretty good for this. It's probably something that sat out at the winery at one point. That's just outside of Seattle. Oh, and look, there's a yellow one. All right, well, lead the way, kitties. 
red polka dot glass looks like an older style. There's a cuteness to this booth. I like this particular. Is this a bridal gown? Swooning over this dress, be a princess forever. Yes, I agree. I don't think it is a bridal gown specifically, but it certainly has enough elements of that 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 would be a hot little number. You could wear it to a wedding and upset the bride. I like the way this dealer mixes things. I enjoy the shell lamp there and the fact that she's got a little wedding couple in the middle of all this stuff you might expect to see on a bridal table. This guy's great. And again, $85. I seriously would buy that if I had room. I think that could be 175 in Seattle. The old London bag for $24.50. This is not an Enid Collins, but it's one of the better of the craft bags. You'd have to resequin it though to really get the money. Horsehair, Italian made. Oh, okay. Well, that's not what I expected. Poor horses. Coors Extra Gold. This is a fun space here. I like the vividness of the movie posters and the color of that churn mixed with everything. I mean, when you start to see people put things together in ways that are pleasing to the eye, you start to understand collectibles. It's for people who are not big collectors or are more decorator focused, it can be really hard for them in a place like this because there's so many little things. But it's thinking about how you're going to combine it in a way that makes it interesting and colorful and useful and match what you have and there's so many different ways to do it and that's a lot of the fun of this especially for the decorator collector then there's some people who just want one of everything that was ever made of a certain type of thing those serious collectors and that is a fun but different kind of display it looks a little more like these malls do 75 this guy with an advertising piece on the back i sold for 135 once but it was advertising rexall specifically ah i sold my other stick and ball screen i do like these this one's 175 i did not get as much as that for mine so this one's more interesting though because of the curvature and the crest at the top with the spindles I like this rope frame. This is something we see in the late Victorian period. It's a sad scene though, mourning the loss of their mother. On the other hand, then we have a bunch of births and this is a neat family record. It is done in 1916. The really, really valuable ones were the ones done previous to the Civil War, but this is really sweet and it talks about the older relatives. Nice little Italian lamp here, this sconce lamp. These were very popular about 10 years ago. I have a really nice hanging chandelier version of this. $65 is really not a bad price. I still think they're very cute. The color yellow just keeps jumping out at me all of a sudden. It must be because of spring. Depression glass, this is the Florentine 2 pattern. And it's 85 for that set. And cute display the way they have this set up. And there is a very neat Easter egg. $45, that's from about 1900. Those old Easter eggs were made of milk glass. Now here's some cute older shoes. These are the styles of the 1930s in satin. It's kind of organization. And this is a wedding pair from 1914. Very sweet little collection of wedding related items in here. I don't find that many of these, so the notion that you would find enough to collect I think is really cool. That's actually a pretty good price on the butterscotch purse because that is lucite. The gold medal has been less expensive, but I think that's starting to change because people are liking brass and gold and shine. So I could see where that might sell for a hundred to a hundred and a quarter. It's not quite cheap enough for me to buy it, but it is cool. We will not shoplift, and we will go look at the garden area. We will not forget that either. So, oh, I see. You can walk right out the back door. Well, I'm not that kind of guy. But I will look at the stuff out the back door. Old 60s era Chrysler. Well, it wasn't Chrysler. Imperial was its own mark for a while. But then they just called it a Chrysler because no one really gave it the same recognition as a Cadillac. There's a Rambler. That's from a Chevy and another Chevy. I've got a bunch of hubcaps I need to sell in Kentucky. If anyone's looking for hubcaps, I might have what you need. Oh boy, it's uh, rather smelly out here. There he 
various paper ephemera from the past. Green plastic knife holder here. $12.50, right out of the 1950s. A lot of these were given away with sets of knives. It's a clever design. It keeps them at your reach and out of your hands and off of the table and the counter. So I actually think it's a pretty logical thing. This belt looks like something right out of 1970. You see Charlie Weaver, but these drummers, I don't run into those. Very fun from about 1965. Another really cute pair of shoes there. $39. They look like Audrey Hepburn. Yes, I see that. I like the rhinestones. Nordstrom buys shoes for their museum, but I don't think they want the ones that were sold by Haggerty's. As usual, this was a fun stop, and I've got to get on to other places if I'm going to show you anything. There's also an entire upstairs that I didn't even get a chance to show you, but that's just a good excuse to come back to Market Street, because this is a fun store. And if you're in Spokane and you love vintage, they're looking for part-time help. I could have spent so much more money there, but I have to make a trip back here to do it because I am out of room. Next door is O'Brien's Furniture, which is closed today. That's okay, furniture is the last thing I can fit in the car, but you occasionally will find stuff in here that's antique and vintage. Well, this is actually a certain vintage style from the 70s. Hilliard Laundry Building, established 1906. This was a rockin' and rollin' place back in its day because it was absolutely packed with railroad workers, people riding through. Spokane was a big railroad town with four transcontinental railroads passing through at one place. So across the street we have this great Art Deco building, Vintage Mercantile and Auction. That actually is the place that I picked up the auction stuff from. Then Hilliard Variety is a shop that's been there a long time that I found cool stuff in. And then this is Collectibles Nostalgia Antiques. Memorabilia B&B Junk Company, 20% off store-wide. It starts with these really cool 1960s salon chairs. You know, you just tip the thing back and it's a chair and they're really fun looking. I think young people should have fun with their furniture. I mean, that's inexpensive for a comfortable chair compared to anything else. And I mean, they were made to be sat in for hours while you had that font cooked. So B&B is not open. We're just gonna window shop it really quickly. I see a nice 1930s low vanity. And it looks like a really big store and they've got enamelware and old coffee grinders and the kind of stuff you would expect. Whole toque pottery, the grape there. And the TV lamp is a really fun color, that chartreuse from the mid 50s. Old fans and then Looks like lots of dealer spaces. Well, we'll have to get back here, like I said. I can't do it all in a day, and that's good because it means there's stuff for us all to look forward to. Another neat Art Deco entry here. Antiques, mid-century, vintage, and collectibles. And packaged candy that I better not buy. Here is a cool gold 50s lamp. I always like this style. I'm very impressed because the minute I walked in the door, I was greeted by a very nice younger woman who was very enthusiastic and uh, asked if I was looking for particular things, so that always impresses me. Interesting, this looks like McCoy, but it's actually a handmade piece, so they must have had an Atlantic mold derivative of that shape back in the 70s. Prayer Ladies, this is something we saw in Idaho in the Thunder Ball earlier today. Here's something kind of different from England. In England, they like to do the pot lids and other ceramics with information and advertising and scenes and this particular one is a quick cooker. Grim Wade's tie up the cooker like this. Inside bowl and cover should be well greased. So it gives you all the reasons that you should use this. No pudding cloth required. See it's easier. And it won a gold medal in London at 19 in 1911. $55. A lot of people like kitchen curiosities. I have to say I do because I'm not really much of a cook so to me the kitchen is a wonderful display space. Oh, look at the cute tie bar. This is Soraka wood or something similar from that day, made of compressed wood. Yep, $12. Oh, they're killing me. I'm just going to have to buy this. I hope I can get in the car before it's time to go. <laughs> so you like the horses? Tell the truth, did your last tip come in? 
if you gotta follow him, use a shovel. This is one of these comic spin things from the 50s or 60s in Japan. Do you believe the rumor there's cashiers and winners? Apparently this guy is not very successful as a horse race gambler. The only way to beat him is with a whip. Okay, for five bucks, that's so silly, I'll have to have that too if my sophistication shows. These are the 1950s versions, but there are approximately 40 different Wizard of Oz books. My mother at one time and my sister had the entire collection. These usually seem to sell, I think in the $15 range, but there are certain titles and certain early editions, especially the ones not done in 1956, but done in 1900, that are quite valuable. Even still, there are a few very obscure titles. Have you heard of Rinky Tink? For example, and here's a ceramic billiken. Pickle by toe, your good fortune will grow. Billiken. Hmm, I'm not sure I'm touching that. Glass basket. Well, that's Fenton Aqua Crest, and I'll take it. It's spring. Everyone needs a basket in the spring to carry along and put nosegays in, I guess. Of course, that makes you then have to look at all the other ones. See, they knew that was Fenton, because it probably has the mark. I'm going to buy the smallest, flattest things I can find. This is a rather big store, too, and. They do have some really cool stuff. I like this one with the encrusted shells in terracotta. Oh heck, I want the store display out of the 50s. Look at that with the great formica and the green color. I'm sure that's not for sale though. Okay, 650 for that little Kanawa with the riggery. It's definitely a bright and colorful thing. And look at this fun collection, 7750, but to get the matchbooks that have the Hopefully they folded over the covers and didn't rip them off, but look at the neat matches inside back when that was part of the advertising. I like the one with the fireman. That's appropriate. He's trying to stop the match from burning him to death, but he will not succeed. 40th anniversary from about the 1990s, $59. They did finally quit making these from what I understand, and I love them. I have a couple of pairs in my yards. Some sort of a hydroplane trophy. It's fun being back in Washington because I'm seeing familiar things like hydroplane trophies and Seattle Sonic stuff and things that are specific to having lived here and grown up here. A groovy lamp from the 70s. I like the ringing of the bell that they have on the door. It definitely feels like an old establishment. Another Royal Copley. $16.99. The Pirate does pretty well for me because I sell in a lot of seacoast areas. Oh, and look, Venus to Milo. $79.99. Signed 1930s. Oh, hmm. I think she's a little newer, but maybe 50s. She's cool, though. Rainbow bread is something I see more in the Midwest, so this is interesting. 69, it obviously never got used. Shirley Temple. Bunch of milk bottles. Nice old radio for 65, and a great American Family scale. That's a great color for 69.99. I got 100 for one by a different company in a similar color. Nice kitchen queen here with the etched top and the timbre doors. They're timbre when they're all these little slats of wood that pull and then go back into some sort of a recess. I think you have to pull it all the way to get it to work. This is a neat way to display this sort of thing. They've got a lot of color. There's store display items. There's military related items. Hi there, everybody. Oh, my hair's coming apart. <laughs> And then they've got sporting goods. It just lays out really nicely. Again, it's uh, display is something that other people do better than I do, but I do really respect it when I see good display. 1960s portable record player where the turntable folded up with the speakers and you could drag this around. That's pretty neat. And then this is fun. Drink Coca-Cola. This is going to be 1960s. Two for 22 cents, 16 ounce, with purchase of something and bottle deposit. That was when they started making you recycle the bottles. 
This is very 70s. A friend of mine's mother always had this in her window, and we always had tea. Here's another English pot lid. This is later. This is to look like one from the Victorian era, but this is more likely to be 1940s or 50s because it's Town Devon's Cries of London pattern. And it was for cheese, and it's $30. And this place just has a feel to it. I really like the Hilliard area for shopping. There are deals here, and the stores, because they're in these old buildings, really feel appropriate. I really like what I bought. I really could buy more here. This is neat. This is a seed separator. I have not seen this variety before. Borner Sampler, manufactured by Seed Trade Reporting Bureau of Chicago, Illinois. Well, it's spring. It's perfect time for this. Two seventy-five. The seventies glass set is forty-eight dollars. That's about what they run at retail these days. Coleman lanterns, especially with the box, these are definitely th things that people buy now. Ninety-nine dollars. The Schwinn World Tourist bicycle looks like it's from the early eighties. It looks like it was also never used. If you remember the early 60s, which was a little before my time, you will remember wax paper cone holders for milk. There's even one that advertises the Seattle World's Fair. I think they sold juice in that one. And this one had root beer. The perfect drink. Postcards. I'm sure these are fun. Again, only so much time in the world, unfortunately. This little Fenton piece has been embellished after the factory, I believe. It's cute. $24. The 1934 13 Sanger Fest of the NPSB in Spokane, Washington. $24. This is some local interest thing that somebody will have a grandfather or somebody who was involved with and come along and pick it up. Here's something I think is fun. Somebody did a collage of these die cuts of Gibson girls from about 1905. And it was done a while ago because you see the gold frame and the lacy doily folded. I think this was done probably contemporary to when those were new. $32.50. That's very cute. You could do quite a neat little display around that in a boudoir. Or you could be sensible, like this ironing trivet. The old Lucky Lager metal piece here, $45. That's a Northwest interest piece. Lucky Lager was made in Vancouver, Washington. Well, here's some advertising swag you're not going to see anymore. Glasgow Smith Klein made this bronze for somebody named David Shearer. It's $72.50. It's actually a very nice piece of sculpture. The collectability is more that it is a piece of swag from a drug company. They're not allowed to peddle that anymore couple of hubcaps here from the 30s, 40s. Just have to look at the price on the black Fenton because you don't see the black so much. $14.99 is not bad. The red one is priced at $29. This is Belik and it's black mark, which means before 1946. It's a little disturbed in the interior though. And then here is a Belik creamer with the gold mark, which was their last mark. This one's $15. I sold one of these for about the same price as Strange House Proud Scale. I'm very sophisticated, even though I'm armless. Maybe they should put him with Venus. These are fantastic, and the price is great. Czechoslovakian, but they're almost always missing all the cordials, and usually the stopper. It's $40, even still, it seems like it's a good price. Just a lot of fun things here, but I can't stay to see all of them. I'm just going to have to come back. I have to go up and make my purchases. I wish I could keep shopping. Well, here's the one that got away. We'll do another quick window shop of this, and this place has really come on. It was sort of a junky place with now a lot in it before, and then it got involved with the auction under different ownership, and now there's just a ton of stuff in there. So vintage mercantile and auction. We're going to have to come back here. There's the Green Fresh Market truck, an old international pickup truck. And in the back they have a sign for an estate sale. I'm sorry I missed that. It's really cool that we have a fun place that is in the same state as Seattle to go to look at different kinds of stuff with a couple of different antique districts. I'm George the Antique Nomad. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, please like and comment. 
and please check out the social links and other stuff in the description. We do all sorts of stuff off of the channel as well, so you can check that out there. Bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now!